Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about ancestry DNA. Specifically, we are talking about the number one question that we get asked about ancestry DNA, which is, where is my Native American ethnicity? A lot of us, myself included, have stories in our family history about a great grandparent or a great great grandparent who was supposedly a full blood of Native American. Uh, interestingly enough, so many of us have this story in our family history uh, that it's taken on mythological proportions. And uh, if my perceptions are correct, if all of us who claimed Native American ancestry really were Native American, what we would find is that probably about half the United States would have Native American ancestry. Now, I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying that the, it's, it's not true as often as we might think it is. So, uh, in my own family, we had this persistent story about Native American ancestry, specifically that my maternal grandfather was Native American, um, either a quarter or an eighth Native American. Um, it was always kind of a fuzzy story. He looked very Native American, black hair, dark brown eyes, high cheekbones, um, olive skin. And uh, he was from uh, Arkansas, the Arkansas-Oklahoma border, um, in, and lived in areas that used to be considered Indian territory. So this persistent myth uh, occurred in my own family. Well, I've had my mother um, has been DNA tested, two of her sisters, and two of her first cousins on her paternal side of the family all have been tested now. That's five individuals, and not one of them shows any Native American ethnicity. And so, of course, that's the question that they're all asking. Well, what happened uh, to our Native American ethnicity? And I've had to explain to them how DNA inheritance works and maybe some facts about family history that they're not too thrilled about. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. And hopefully for those of you who are questioning this, it'll make sense and either put to rest those myths or give you further avenues for research to be able to prove them true. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, basically, when you uh, have this myth or this story, I, I don't want to call it a myth because it's not in every case, the story in your family history that you have Native American and it does not show up in your DNA ethnicity report, there's basically two options here. Either it is too far back in your family history to detect, meaning you did not inherit that portion of DNA from that particular ancestor who was Native American because... Um, it wasn't really your great-grandmother who was Native American, it was her great-great-great-grandmother, or none of your ancestors were Native American. So let's focus on that first um, possibility first, because um, it is very possible that those of you who have stories of Native American ancestry, myself included, um, really do have Native American ancestry, it's just further back than you thought it was. So um, let's talk about how DNA is inherited so that you have a basic understanding of how that works. You get 50% of your DNA from your father and 50% of your DNA from your mother. Um, your parents each inherited 50% of their DNA from each of their parents who inherited 50% of their DNA from their parents. But here's the thing that um, people who are new to, to DNA might not understand, and that is when we say that you inherit 50% of your DNA from your father and 50% of your DNA from your mother, that does not mean that you get an even 50% split of everything that they have. What it means is that you get a random 50% of their genetics. And let me just use a simple example to explain this. Now, this is super simplified, but for those of you who are still trying to wrap your head around this concept, I want to make sure that you understand. Let's um, imagine, for example, that your father is 100% Italian and that your mother is 50% British and 50% Western European. Okay. So you're going to get 50% of your DNA from each parent. Well, if your father is 100% Italian, that means that you are going to be 50% Italian. That's easy math. If your mother is 50% British and 50% Western European, that does not mean necessarily that you are going to be 25% British and 25% Western European. She could, for example, give you all of her British DNA and none of her Western European DNA. 
So you got 50% of her DNA, but not an even 50% split. Now to take this a step further, if you have a sibling, your mother could pass on an entirely different combination to that sibling. So even though you are full siblings, full siblings only share about half of their DNA because they get half from each parent, but it's not necessarily the same 50% that you received. So you might get the 50% of, um, of British and your sister might get the 50% of Western European. And so you still have 50% of your DNA in common because you both are still 50% Italian from your father. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let me use one more analogy that might resonate with some of you. Um, imagine you have a deck of cards, okay? A deck of cards has 52 cards in it and you're going to get half of those cards. So we're gonna shuffle those cards. We're gonna deal out 26 of those cards to you and that is what you receive, half, okay? Then we're going to reshuffle that entire deck of 52 cards and we're gonna deal out another 26 cards to your sister. And then we're going to reshuffle that deck and we're gonna deal out another 26 cards to your brother. Now, if we were to take a snapshot of each of those deals, what we would discover is that about, in almost every case, about half of those cards, or about 13 of those cards, you're going to have in common with your brother and with your sister but they're going to get cards you didn't get and you're going to get cards they didn't get. Hopefully those two analogies, between those two analogies, this concept of inheritance makes a little bit more sense. What it means is that um, you are not inheriting everything your parents are or have in their DNA. You're only inheriting half of it. And so what does that mean for Native American ancestry? Well, if you have a grandparent or a great grandparent who is 100% Native American, then chances are you've received some of that Native American DNA. And in the Ancestry database here, where we have more than a million people who have taken the DNA test and received their results, uh, we're seeing a lot of people with Native American ancestry. So it is showing up where it exists. The problem is, like in my case, most of us, the story is really unclear, right? So in my case, I was told it was my grandfather who was Native American. But then uh, as I became more aware as an adult and started asking more questions, specifically genealogical questions, it came out that, well, no, maybe it was his grandmother or her mother who was the full-blooded Native American. And maybe it was even her mother who was the full-blooded Native American. And the reality is that, uh, particularly here in the United States, uh, to have anybody as a full, full-blooded anything is really, really rare. Even if my Native American ancestor was just two or three generations ago, chances are two or three generations before them, somebody um, uh, intermarried or parented a child with, uh, with a European. And so the grandmother that we may think is 100% Native American may really only be 25% Native American or 50% Native American. So there's a lot, of, um, a lot of variability in the family history and in the biology of it. But let's just use this particular example. Let's say that it is your fourth great grandparent who is actually 100% Native American. Well, they pass on 50% of their DNA to their child, and 50% of that DNA gets passed on to their child, and 50% of that DNA gets passed on to their child, and so on, and so on, and so on, until we get down to you, and you have just this tiny little trace, less than 2%, this tiny little trace of Native American DNA. And so it could be that it's just too small to detect that amount of DNA. Or as we mentioned before, it could just be that the inheritance of it is random enough that you didn't get that small piece, but maybe your sister did or your brother did or one of your first cousins did. And so one of the ways to prove Native American ancestry, if you do not show any in your DNA, is to have other family members tested. So you might have a sibling who received that portion. If you have parents 
or grandparents tested, absolutely get them tested. Any or living, absolutely get them tested. Anybody in that oldest generation that's still living, you want to have tested. And don't just think lineally back to your parents and grandparents. Do your parents have any living siblings? Do your grandparents have any living siblings? And then come down the line. Do your parents have any living first cousins? right? Do they have any living children? Anybody in that branch of the family within one or two generations, if you have them tested, and if there was a Native American ancestor recently enough, somebody is going to show up with that DNA. So as I mentioned in my family, um, I had, uh, we have tested uh, my mother, her two sisters, and two of her first cousins. We do have an intention to test other first cousins, but at this point, um, we are fairly convinced that either A, it is too far back to detect, which means there is nobody in an older living generation left to test that would, that would give us the answer or the definitive answer about whether or not we have Native American DNA. Or we have to come to the realization that none of our ancestors were Native American. And so that leads me to do more research. So let me just talk briefly about some of the research you can do. I've actually done a couple of videos on Native American ancestry, so you can find them on the Ancestry YouTube channel, and I don't want to regurgitate or duplicate a lot of that information, but I do just want to um, make a couple of notes here. The first one is, uh, just because your family lived or was born in Indian territory does not mean that they were Native American. That's, I think, how a lot of these family stories, my own included, got started. Um, Indian territory uh, was what we, for the most part, was what we now recognize as the state of Oklahoma. Oklahoma did not become a state until 1907, and so anybody born in that area prior to that time, uh, it was officially known as Indian territory, uh, with different uh, areas being assigned to different tribes. But there were a lot of white people who lived and worked on farms and in the oil fields in those areas prior to 1907. And so you're, you might have family members who were born in Indian Territory. And that story somehow gets changed or misunderstood within just a generation or two as, well, we have an, an Indian ancestor. So look and see, was somebody born in Indian Territory? Could that be where that story started? Another way that a lot of uh, Native American family stories get started have to do with appearances. People say, oh, well, you know, she had black hair and high cheekbones and olive skin, and so therefore she must have been Native American or she looked Native American. And one of the problems with that is that there are a lot of different ethnicities who have similar features. A lot of uh, Mediterranean people, um, some some Europeans who intermarry with African Americans end up with some of those characteristics. Lots of different ways that those appearances could show up. Now in my family, we actually have a photo of one of my grandfather's uh, great aunts, I believe, uh, who was dressed in full Indian regalia. And that was somehow passed around as proof that, well, we must be Native American somewhere in this family. Well, come to find out, she had actually gone to a fair and at the fair, they had had one of those photo booths where you could, you know, pick a costume. And, you know, be it, you could be a cowboy, you could be an Indian, you know, you could dress up in old timey clothes, right? Um, and she had had her photo taken at the fair in a costume, and then had sent that copies of that photo out to different family members that had then been passed down generation to generation, and somehow that ended up um, as a family legend or myth that we were Native American. Cracks me up every time I think about, um, you know, if she is somewhere, you know, if there is an, an, another side and she is watching us, <laughs> um, then I have to wonder if she just is giggling at the joke that she somehow managed to play on a, generations of our family because of a single photo that she decided to take. Um, in a moment of frivolity for her. So uh, lots of different ways that that Native American story gets started. Now, with that said, there are still uh, Native American uh, ancestors that can be found. A lot of um, records exist. As a matter of fact, Ancestry just did a huge launch of Native American records with the Oklahoma Historical Society last November, and you can find those on the Ancestry website. Most notably of those 
are the Dawes Rolls for the five civilized tribes. That is um, what they were called at the time. Those Dawes Rolls, uh, people had to prove uh, Native American ancestry or connection to Native Americans um, in order to be included on the roll. So again, you need to be a little bit careful just because somebody is included on the Dawes Rolls does not mean they were Native American. For example, I was doing research for a family who was convinced of their Native American ancestry. Sure enough, their great, great, great grandfather was listed on the Dawes Rolls. He was listed there, however, because his second wife was Native American. His first wife, from whom they descended, was not. So he was white, his first wife was white, all of their children were white, his second wife was Native American and they had two children and so he was included on the Dawes Rolls with her and with their children but this other part of the family um, was not, even though some of the children were raised by this Native American stepmother, uh, they were not Native American. So, so white people do get included on those records so you do have to pay attention to the details of those records but the Dawes Rolls are an excellent place to start if you have particular uh, stories about your family being from one of those five civilized tribes. Now, the other thing you have to be really careful of is make sure that the story about your Native American ancestry matches a specific time and place. The Native American tribes, and there are thousands of them recognized by the federal government, the Native American tribes uh, have lived in very specific places at very specific times in the history of, of you know, the recorded history of this nation and, and in the colonial period. And so if you have Native American ancestors, you know, if, if you're claiming that you have um, Pawnee ancestry or Cherokee ancestry or Sioux ancestry, uh, make sure that you understand where those tribes lived at specific periods of time because if your ancestor who was supposedly from that tribe was nowhere near that time and place, then chances are you've either got the tribe wrong, which makes a difference in your research, or uh, the story has, has somehow come to you um, without all the facts. So uh, hopefully that is enough information to help some of you understand uh, why, you're, why you may not have inherited Native American DNA or uh, why you might not have it at all anywhere in your family. Uh, if you have additional questions and you're watching this live, I will be on chat in just a few minutes to answer those questions. If you are watching this as an archived video on our YouTube channel, please feel free to leave comments. We will monitor those and reply as necessary. Also, we're getting ready uh, again to publish a new monthly calendar of topics for our live stream videos. So if you have suggestions for topics you'd like to see covered in future videos, you can email me at ask at ancestry.com. Just drop in the subject line of that email, um, live stream um, or barefoot genealogist topic suggestions so that I know that, it, that that's what that is. And then be sure sometime in the next week or so to check the Ancestry Facebook page Click on that events tab, you'll see the topics for September. You'll be able to RSVP to the events that you're interested in or the video topics that you're interested in. And then you'll get some Facebook reminders uh, when those videos are coming up to watch live or when they've been archived so you can watch them on YouTube. Well, that's all I have prepared for you today. Until next time, have fun climbing your family tree.